How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Blue Show Thing and welcome back to what is likely the last episode, I guess you'll know because you saw the title, of Riddle Joker, which is always sad. I love it when we get to play games and I love being able to finish series because then we get to start a new series, but then it's always bittersweet to say goodbye to one, especially with my one playthrough policy, which I know some people are like, about, but hey, come on. I gotta leave some stuff in there. I, it's part of the deal I set up. I always wanna make sure that developers understand that like I'm not planning on being a completely spoiler type of channel. Ah, uh, yes, we're gonna go through the story. I wanna be able to like share a whole narrative and comment on it and talk about like the ups and downs, the positives and negatives. But I also don't want developers feeling like this is just a place people can go to just get the story. I like to leave stuff behind for people to enjoy on their own. But we do talk about it. If you uh, ever are on the Discord, sometimes it highlights games I've been playing. And lately you'll have seen I've been playing a lot of this, uh, if you notice that at all. And that's because I've been doing parallel playthroughs of the other routes. Except for one, because I can't start like one of the last routes unless I make, unless I finished a route. So I haven't finished one yet, so I have to do the final route then. And then there's some kind of after thing. So like, like pretty much what's going to happen is we're going to get to the end and i'm going to go to it and then the week after that i'm going to talk about the entire game all spoilers like gone and we'll just kind of talk about it and i'll give my impression on everything i'll be able to share with you my my favorites my my likes my dislikes all of that and it's often i do it live so like you can comment and ask me questions directly i even sometimes host people on the discord channel live if they feel comfortable wanting to talk about something like this so yeah we'll get to that when we get to that but anyway just wanted to give you a heads up details of that will be at the end of this episode if it's the last episode and if not wait till then but this should be the last one um but yeah uh last time uh, we confronted the mastermind who was trying to, like, frame Hazuki to really... He just wanted to stick it to her. He just wanted to, like, punish her for being related to the people who were in authority, whom he blamed for letting him take the fall when and not giving him a chance to defend himself. I mean, and that's the thing. It's like, he was a very sympathetic character. Like, I absolutely agree. Like, it makes sense. And it's like, it's a, it's a very true to life situation that a lot of people who are in minorities actually experience. The 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 not being given the, 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 the same frame of reference and doubt, not being given as equal opportunity to defend themselves often because of preconceived, like, uh, assumptions that can be made. And not necessarily in the courtroom, but leading to the courtroom, which honestly can be a lot more important when it comes to like handling the collection of uh, data, investigations, questioning, um, preservation of, of rights, and all that, you know, collection of evidence and all that. So anyway, I can sympathize with him, but making things explode in front of people's eyes, not great. Thankfully, he wasn't making their eyeballs actually explode, but that's the thing I think he probably could have. So at least he wasn't going that far. He was just making essentially a flashbang go off right in someone's face, which is still horrific and really painful. But I thought he was, he like, I, the fact that he could make things like a, like a fire extinguisher explode, you know, like an eyeball has pressure in it. It, it wouldn't be that big of a, like a thing. He also probably could make your lungs explode. So like, we should just be grateful that he could. Maybe they did mention that sometimes Astron abilities have trouble affecting people like directly. So maybe that's it. Maybe there were some limitations to it in that regard. But anyway, we're here catching up with Hazuki, who's been able to accept our role and what we do and is not going to hold it against us. And after talking things out, we kind of come to an understanding, which has allowed our relationship to, to boom, like fully into like what it is now. So let's explore that as we can. So she says, hi for making you wait. Oh no, it's all good. Yeah, winter's fast approaching. It's just literal for me. It's getting chilly outside here. It's been a month since the incident at the pool. The school was placated by Hazuki's fervent appeal, and they limited Kido's punishment to a letter of apology and one month suspension. Hey, that's not bad. Hopefully he sees the mercy in that. He actually admitted to his wrongdoings fairly readily. Maybe Hazuki's passion inspired him a little? Who knows? So, how's Kido doing? Ah, that's awesome. Hazuki is allowed to speak with Kido on a regular basis alongside his assigned counselor. At first, things were a bit unfriendly, but I hear they've grown fairly casual with each other now. Hey, that's cool. I mean, it's good that he's 
fostering relationships. He was so focused on his like revenge, he obviously wasn't fostering actual relationships. So that's a good thing. What? Isn't he suspended? How the heck did he get a girlfriend? Fine. She's really in a good mood today. You know, you've changed as much as he has, Hasuki. She used to be so rigid in her ways that it made her hard to relate to for a lot of people. But I think after the whole thing with me and Kido, she softened up in a good way. Wait, she had to do community service? Thanks to the huge water explosion she caused, Hazuki was also punished. She was asked to write a letter of apology as well and assigned one month of community service. Well, I can't exactly deny she did go a bit overboard back then. Sorry about all that. It was largely my fault you got in trouble. Still, unlike the two of them, I faced no real repercussions for what happened. Because nobody beside them and Nanami ever learned of my participation there, even when the guards came to take Kido and Hazuki took care of things so that they didn't notice me. Most surprising of all is the fact that Kido didn't tattle on me to them. She never told me the details, but I knew she must have worked hard to convince him not to. Only as long as you allow me to do the same. Thanks, Hazuki. I love you. Why? She fans herself with her hands. Yeah. Well, glad you're not feeling cold anymore. Was she really? I have thoughts about that then, because the base of what I've seen a, a different route when it comes to PDA, they're nothing. <laughs> Apparently, rumors about me and Hazuki being super lovey-dovey in public spread around the school, and she got admonished for it. Well, we're not forbidden from going out, so we can still be together. Alright, alright. Well, that's fine. We can make love as much as we want when we're alone. Yeah, but it's fun! <laughs> Clearly miffed, she turns away from me and sits on one of the courtyard benches. Sorry, don't get mad, please. Oh, look at that! So cute! Well, I'm happy it's enough to embarrass you. No! How many times do we have to go over this, Hazuki? I love you! As you, <laughs> in the reality of like any relationships, like your your partner needs to love you, so you should just be you. You know, like if you feel like you have to be behave a certain way to be liked by somebody, then they're not liking you anyway. They're liking the facade you've decided to put up. That's not healthy, and it won't lead to really anything. But also, people tend to see through that anyway. So. Like, don't just assume that somebody who's in love with you has fallen in love with the facade. They likely see the real you there. You just don't think they do. I don't. I want my precious little Hazuki to stay the way she is forever. All right. I think it's about time we get started. Ah, so da. Hazuki mentioned that there was something she wanted to do once she completed all her community service. She called it the dorm consultation room. She borrowed one, from one of the free rooms from the dorm to set up a counseling room where students can go and talk about their problems. Aww. You didn't seem so hot on the idea when Mibu-san brought it up. What caused the change of heart? I mean, he still would have had to choose, and based on his mental state, I'm not sure he would have been able to trust even, like, a well-wishing fellow student to talk to about that kind of thing. But having an option there might have made a difference, and it could make a difference for others. Yeah, yeah. She looks up at a bright blue sky and smiles. Yeah, 
Maybe, but that's the beauty of having it be an open door policy. It's like, you aren't forcing or cajoling anyone to come. You're just saying, hey, if you feel like it, come join and talk with me. And then if they come of their own volition, you can't really be being accused of prying your nose into people's business. You're just simply making yourself available. Yeah. You know, she might actually be a really good candidate for social work. Like, she has talked about how she respects and loves, like, the police, but doesn't feel like she has what it takes to really be a part of that, which I argue she would. But if she doesn't feel like that's just her vibe, being a social worker would be really good. She could help other people, especially she could specialize in astrals, kind of helping them, like, continue to work with like the community especially if they've gone off the rails a bit like she could become a specialist counselor for that because she has that blend of like respect for the law and following protocol but also having that compassion and understanding simply a job that needs doing not at all it's wonderful <laughs> not at all You'd be arrogant if you're doing it to gain something for yourself, maybe. But you're not. You're doing it out of genuine, selfless desire to help others. <laughs> of course you do. She's taking a giant step forward with this. It may not be smooth sailing, but I know she has the strength to tackle any difficulties that come her way. You'd have to throw me away. <laughs> what do you mean? その<laughs> Yeah, unfortunately. Well, thankfully, the head of my the head of my group is a bit uh, in my corner. I don't think he'd want to separate us. Dad chose not to report about Hazuki to the other ups. If they somehow learned of this, not only would Nanami and I be cut off, but Dad too for trying to cover it up. If you tell the principal or your father about it, I'll definitely have to leave. So in short, you have the power to keep me at this academy or not. Oh yes. <laughs> she simply smiles. So, what are you going to do with me? It's really cute, but this is one of those lines where, in the context of, in like, in, in the contextual, it's all about where it happens to be. In a context between a boyfriend and girlfriend sitting on a school bench in the middle of the day, happily enjoying each other's company, it's really, really sweet. If this is something that a stalker is saying to you online from their third private account that somehow has also forwarded a picture of your house, it's the worst and most horrible thing in the world. <laughs> Looks like I'm in for a rough time. Ah, taihenda. Okay, that's actually a better picture. That's so cute. Sono kawari. Watashi mo Satoru ni subete o takusu kara. Owai ko da na. So we hold each other's reins. Satoru wa soyou no wa iya ka? It's funny that there's still any doubt in her mind at this point. Of course not. I have no eyes for anyone but you. Ah, watashi mo da. Satoru, ai shite iru zo. It's so cute! Ah! Yeah, we really didn't have much left, huh?
Okay, so, to summarize what just happened, apparently a fatal error occurred while it was trying to play the outro sequence. I have a guess. <laughs> so I have downloaded the full game in the background. However, it doesn't overwrite what you are allowed to see if in CI, you know, pictures and all that stuff if you'd already started the game. So this game continued to skip through as if I hadn't got the full game downloaded, but I've been able to see the full game on my other playthroughs, like on my own time, including the Hazuki route. What I think has happened is that because those files are all there, in the outro sequence when it plays all the stills of the from the game, I think it was playing like the full game version, which likely had C CIs that were not allowed. But because this save game was technically on the Steam safe version, it was not allowing it. So it caused a fatal error and killed the game. But I could skip it if I clicked on the screen rather than on the error where normally it was just crashing the game. And that time it didn't. So that's why we're here. I know the outro music's really great. I could go back and try and like get it. I might do that for this video, but if I didn't, that's what happened. So we'll get there when we get there. But anyway, so this is the epilogue. Let's, let's enjoy this together, shall we? Brand new skyscrapers line the cityscape. The streets look as clean as can be. I can hear the sound of trains calmly passing by in the distance. Here is this peaceful rural landscape. A town was created for the purpose of Astron research. The town is Washizu, uh, Washizu Research City. Man, it sure has been a while. Two or so years ago was when I graduated from Kika, and that was the last time I was here. I walk around town, taking in all the nostalgic scenery. <laughs> this place sure brings back memories. I used to come here all the time with my friends and shop and do other things. Hazuki and I also came here on a number of dates. I wonder what she's up to. Oh, wait, what? We're still- we're not with her at all? Ah, oh, Fetch! I didn't expect that! It really was like leaning in on the whole, like, happy ending. The dorm counseling room that Hazuki created was met with skepticism from the student population at first. However, thanks to the efforts of Mitsukaza-san and other, our other friends, as well as some advertising from the academy, people gradually started to come to her. Most surprising of all is the fact that Kido and Watari also eventually became volunteer helpers. Once she gained their trust, they became quite good friends. I guess that's just Hazuki for you. Her personality attracts people. But alas, all good things come to an end. Hazuki also graduated with me two years ago. Mibu-san took over the dorm counseling room, and I've heard that students there now continue to keep it alive as a school tradition. Speaking of Hazuki... Oh, fish! Oh, <laughs> Okay, so we are here with her a little bit. After wandering for a while, I arrive back at the train station. A young girl is asking a police officer for something by the entrance. The officer gently smiles for the uh, for the clearly nervous girl. はい。あそこにライトレールというロメン電車が見えると思うんですけど、あれに乗ってキッカ学院前という駅で降りればもう目の前ですよ。あ、ありがとうございます。the young girl bows and trots off as the officer waves her goodbye. After a few seconds, I walk up to her. Hey there, Hazuki. Eh? I wanted to see you on the job. After graduation, Hazuki, needless to say, decided to aim to become a police officer. Yeah, that's awesome! At the time, it was hard for Astro to join the force. But thanks to the help of her father, being the high-ranking officer he is, she was admitted. It seems like the pro astral faction also did some work behind the scenes to help her end that taboo. I have a feeling those guys are, uh, are the higher ups my dad always mentions to me. So, so Not normally, but maybe for you. Why well, is it always something sexual with you? Ero Neither have you, as a matter of fact. She's still just as honest and up up upright as she ever was. <笑>それは君が知らないだけだ。近いうちにアストラル能力者の相談課が設けられる。そこに配属されるのが私の夢だ。あ、that's <laughs> Her father apparently got in close contact with the pro astral faction. I imagine after the whole ordeal that, uh, that inspired Hazuki to become a police officer. I heard their cooperation greatly helped towards establishing the new counseling department for astrals. I know you're moving up in the world, silly. All I meant was that you're still my sweet, beautiful Hazuki. 
She still fought the tease. But she was a case at Scandal. So, not who knew who made it. Yep, she's still the same old Hazuki. <laughs> It's about time for our move, right? I came to talk about that. Oh, so that's it. Hazuki currently lives in the police dormitory. By custom, all fresh graduates in the police academy have to live there for a period of time. Next month, however, she's finally allowed to leave. Of course, she'll be coming to live with me then. Aw, yay! That's good. I was worried for a second. I was like, what happened? <laughs> yeah, I've been waiting for ages. For the past year or so, we've only been able to go on dates when our schedule's lined up, which was very often. But now I'll be able to see her beautiful face whenever I come back home. Aw, yes! <laughs> I understand. We'll just have to make up for it by making sweet love next time we're alone. Oh, what are you going to do? Make me? <laughs> Hello? <sighs> All right. Not really. Just wanted to talk with Hazuki a little more. <laughs> Date's a pretty big word. It's not your fault. Always. Anyways, I'll contact you again when I get there. I heave a heavy sigh as soon as I hang up the call. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I did. Sorry. I'm sure you'll realize this pain to yourself in due time. Yeah, unfortunately. We both run in circles of, like, you don't get the luxury of picking and choosing your hours because you can't pick or choose when there's crises. Yep, no way around it. Even if we walk different paths, our aspirations are still the same. We move forward with the conviction that our actions will lead to a better world for all. Well, I better get going. I love you too, Hazuki. I won't be easy to achieve the world we dream of, but we're working hard toward it day by day. Aw, that was really sweet. That was a cool epilogue. Ha! I, you think I'd forget? No! I found something! <laughs> so it turns out if you go to, uh, there's like, so there's extra on here, which is obviously like, uh, see, don't fetch. Go back to dust cover that. You go to extra, you get pictures of like, you know, the gallery and all that stuff. You go to after, and there's ending stories. There's one, and then there's two. So you click the one, and you get like, the actual like epilogue, you get like these side stories. So like, there's after stories. We're covering after stories. Yes! <laughs> We're not done yet. <laughs> I thought it was over. We're doing more. <sighs> okay. So, let's just jump right in. <sighs> it's been about a week since the showdown at the pool with Kido. Everything is more or less settled down, so Nanami and I have continued living here. I thought things would finally, back, back to, finally be back to normal between me and Hazuki now, but not quite. I haven't been able to spend much time with Hazuki these days. She decided to keep the secret the se keep secret the fact that Nanami and I are here as secret agents, so that's not a problem. But another issue of, of sorts popped up. Apparently, a teacher got on her case about our excessive PDA and sternly warned her about excess exercising more restraint. Since she's got reprimanded, all we can really do in public now is say hi and chat some. Plus, we can't go on any dates now. What am I supposed to do about this? I'm in pain here! <laughs> uh, yeah, what did you think? She doesn't seem too thrilled about this topic. Come on, don't be like that. You're the only one I can talk to about this. She's been busy lately. She has so much to do as student council president, she disappears immediately after school ends. So the only person I can really confide in about this is Nanami. Eh? Mm -hmm. I know. You think I like bothering you with this? Phew, glad you managed to appease her. Really? I didn't get the impression it was that bad. 
半分は自業自得じゃないかなって思う。That's so bad about a couple showing their love. In fact, that teacher should be ashamed of the fact that they were so offended by that. お兄ちゃん、変わったよね。What do you mean? 前は人を寄せ付けない雰囲気があったんだけど、今はそのトゲトゲしさがなくなった気がする。Aww. We're supposed to keep people at arm's length because of our job. We have to keep a low profile so it's not easy just to justify going around and fraternizing with people willy nilly. You think? If that was the case, it's only because Hazuki was far more earnest than anyone I've ever met. Just couldn't ignore her. Well, all I'm saying is I want to be closer to her. Yeah, the trouble is that the stuff that she showed us behind closed doors is anything but decorum. <laughs> I know that. It's not like she needs to be stiff and proper all the time. Hazuki said she'd take the warding to heart and establish a, a certain rule for us. The rule she came up with is to never show affection in places where there are students or teachers. She said something about people tasked task with maintaining discipline in the academy having to set an example. Yep. Deep down, I know she's right, and I shouldn't really be complaining. Then my phone rings. Hello? Yes! Sure, what is it? She's asking us out! Yeah, I'm free. Oh no, I want to. I just got so happy my brain froze for a second there. It's been so long since we've been able to spend quality time together. Just the thought of going on a date with her gets me incredibly giddy. Sure. Unable to contain my joy, I do a fist pump as soon as I end the call. Like, fetch! <laughs> Sorry, Nanami. There's not a problem anymore. We're going on a date this weekend, so I'll finally be able to see her again. <laughs> Good for you. Top her up and get in. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> sorry. I might have underestimated how long this might be. This could be a super episode for a finale. Oh my gosh, yes! It's finally the day of our date. As soon as I arrive at the place we agreed to meet, I see Hazuki wave and run toward me. Sorry about that. Seeing her as happy as a little puppy makes me chuckle. <laughs> Sorry, you just remind me of a puppy right now. It's really cute. Aw, that's a shame. I wanted to try that again. <laughs> That's true. You know, I was remembering, it's like, I don't remember our PDAs being that big, and then there's that whole scene. I kind of must have blocked it from my mind, because that was pretty uh, overt. Wow, you sure flip flop fast. <laughs> She's adorable as ever. Man, you know, it feels like it's been ages since we last could talk like this. <laughs> She's clearly in a good mood. Want to link arms? <laughs> oh, it's so nice and sweet. She gently wraps her arm around mine. <sighs> I agree. It sure is. Nothing feels better than having her boobs sink into my arm. I'm so happy! Of course I am! <laughs> Uh, at least she knows. What are you, were you doing that on purpose? She pulls my arm expected, excitedly. You're in a good mood today, huh? Aww. I mean, I think we could at least touch each other at school. You don't have to be exercising that much restraint. Limiting ourselves is only taking it a bit. It, living in a, uh, limiting ourselves to only talking is a bit harsh. Hmm. That's true. 
I suppose like we do need to kind of be on the up and up for that. You take everything seriously, don't you? Not at all. So I love you, Hatsuki. What was that? I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I heard that right. One more time. There we go! As soon as she shouts, all eyes turn toward us. I hear that loud and clear, thank you. <laughs> like, hey, like you said, we can only do this so often. I can only poke you so often. Well, this is called payback for you intentionally pressing your boobs against my arm. A bit later, we finally arrive at the shopping mall. Hazuki's been sticking as close as humanly possible to me the whole time. Uh, it's kind of hard for me to walk like this. <laughs> the problem isn't being able to walk itself, rather that it's a little distracting to feel her boobs on my arm the whole time. <sighs> Oh, that does sound nice. <laughs> Your parents would be worried to death. Aww, I understand where she's coming from. Being able to live alone with her would be a dream come true. We keep walking until the travel agency poster catches my eye. Hmm. So we have winter break coming up after finals. What do you just say? What do you say we go on a little vacation somewhere? Just the two of us. Why is it always something marriage related with her? Is there anywhere you'd be interested in going? Uh oh. <laughs> mm. Let's see, if I were to pick two places that are specifically on my bucket list, well, obviously one is Japan, but what would be my second one? God, there's a lot. Oh, I don't know. Honestly, it'd probably be a tie between, like, like either like Rome, Greece, London, or or uh, Jerusalem, one of those. <laughs> oh, cool! What are they? <laughs> of course, she wants to go to where they filmed the movie she loves so much. I think I know the answer, but I'll ask anyway. Why? The real what now? Oh, that sounds adorable, actually. Of course, she'd find something like that adorable. You know, Kyoto would be a pretty good destination. Even like, I've heard it's a really popular destination just in Japan for Japanese citizens. Then why don't we just go to Kyoto then? We'd be the most interesting tour ever. <laughs> she starts to prattle on about various places where the wild shogun was filmed. I bet she could keep talking for at least 30 minutes if I let her go on. Okay, let's take one of these Kyoto pamphlets. For students, Kyoto wouldn't even be that far a stretch, I'm guessing. <sighs> Time flies and our date ends. Our legs feel more like lead the closer we get to the academy. Eventually, we reach the entrance of the dorm. I guess this is it. I don't want to say goodbye just yet, but Hazuki said we should stop visiting each other's rooms, so there's not much I can do. It'll be alright. Can we go on another, another date next weekend? I try to sound cheerful, but frankly it's hard. I'll call you every day. Mm. Oh, it hurts! I stroke her head, though I don't know if that serves as any consolation to her. Time flies after dinner, and before I know it, it's past ten. I, I lay in my bed, flipping through my travel pamphlet as I recall everything that Hazuki told me today. 
a vacation, just the two of us. Come to think of it, I think a lot of people do cosplay in those movie set theme parks. I bet she'd look great in a kimono. Man, that'd be great. Makes me think of the cliched scene of a nobleman pulling out the princess's sash as she spins around and blushes. Knowing Hazuki, she'd be into that. Yeah, she would! <laughs> I keep fantasizing about silly situations when my phone rings. Hey, what's up, Hazuki? <laughs> We're climbing the windows! The first thing I hear is Hazuki crying. What's wrong? Hazuki. <laughs> Screw the rules! <laughs> mm. I can go out to your room right now if you want. Climb the window! Hmm. <laughs> she blows her nose and keeps sobbing like a little child. Well, gotta do something about this. So you don't mind me coming up there if no one sees me? I can turn invisible. Absolutely. Yeah. I have a surefire way of getting up there without being caught, so don't cry anymore. I, I hang up the call without waiting for her answer and then hop to my feet. As her boyfriend, I have to do something when I hear her in tears like that. Wait for me, Hazuki. I'll be there in just a second. I confirm the location of her room, lean out my window, and take a leap. <laughs> Fetch! Just jumping, huh? Upon entering through the window, I find her pacing around the floor. Here I am, Hazuki. <laughs> I immediately cover her mouth as she tries to scream out. It's me, see? The window. She stares in that direction, dumbfounded. How about ninja? Let's go with ninja. Hey, I told you nobody would catch me. You're lucky you have me for a boyfriend. He's like, yes! She hugs me as tight as she can. Nah, it's easy for me. Plus, I wanted to see you too. I only decided against it initially because I wanted to honor her decision. Hmm, I could think of a few. Oh, fetch. Oh dear. And since this is the uh, unpatched version, I'm guessing I'll be doing some skipping here. She looks up at me, her eyes wet with tears. Well, I think you know my answer. It's like she can read my thoughts. God, you always win for the lines like those! <laughs> You're like, oh, fetch! What reward? Oh no. She's always like this. Is it gonna be the dog thing again? Oh no. She takes out something from one of her shells and rushes to the bathroom. I hear some rustling, but not much besides that. Oh, this is even better! <laughs> then she bursts out wearing the bikini apron combo. Whoa. Seeing her in a bikini inside the room is one thing, but the apron on top of it makes it sight to behold. She covers her face with her palm in embarrassment. No, no, I really like it. You're super cute. Yes, those are my genuine thoughts. Well, 
Yeah, it looks perfect on you. Well, I always thought you had a pretty hot body. Not only that, I used to eye her up so much during swim class, but I think she'll she'll think I'm a creep if I say that, so I better keep it to that keep that to myself. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hazuki, I gently put my hands on her shoulders. Will you let me look at you a bit from a bit closer? Ah, Yep. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs> I go from behind, sit the both of us down in front of her room's mirror. Yeah, I'm not gonna read this part. We're definitely not here, so. <laughs> I will see you guys afterwards. <laughs> well, that was fun. <laughs> Woo! Oh boy, that was that was that was a spicy one. That was one of the spicier ones we've had. But let's keep going. Uh, I'd love to stay longer, but I should probably head back to my room before everyone starts waking up. She has such a lonesome look in her eyes. Yeah. It's almost morning, though. Aww, her sweet plea makes my heart sing. Okay, but no more. You're allowed. I hug her in an attempt to make her feel better. There's nothing wrong with that. You can ask me anything of me. I know you have to be an exemplary student in front of everyone else. But when you're alone, you can be spoiled as you want. I wouldn't mind at all. You're my girlfriend, Hazuki, and I love you. She's always doing her best. It's fair for her to be able to relax at least once we're alone. Of course you do. Absolutely. Yeah, go right ahead. She hesitates for a second and bashfully states her wish. As you wish. Good morning, Hazuki. Ah, Satoru. I come down to the lobby a couple hours and Hazuki's there to greet me with a smile on her face. Somehow I managed to get back to my room this morning before the sun rose, thankfully. Sure is. We simply pretend this is our first time seeing each other today. That's when a female student approaches us. I recognize her face. She's the girl who lives in the room next to Hazuki's, if I recall. Uh oh. Uh oh no! <laughs> No! I'm not sure asking me is the smartest decision. Hazuki, no! The girl seems to read the situation as she hurriedly leaves with a blush on her face. The room's not as soundproof as we thought. <laughs> well, I think she heard your moaning last night when we were doing, you know what? The walls across the room are soundproof, so in theory, she wouldn't be able to hear anything that wasn't an extremely loud yell or something. Yes, pretty loud. Yeah, she's uh, 
She gets excited. <laughs> Her face freezes with shock. Satoru, no! <laughs> Don't even joke about that. Shush! Not here! <laughs> she begins rolling around on the ground in agony. Hey, stop! We're in the lobby! It's okay. She said she wouldn't tell anyone. <laughs> she curls up on the ground and trigger a fetal position. That's appealing. <laughs> at least a grad at least graduate, Hasaki. It was a crazy morning to say the least. After that, it took an entire day for me to get Hasaki to calm back down. <laughs> oh boy. After story this. Let's do story number two! Since what? Okay, so this has been like, this has been like a month since the last story. It's a service that Hazuki started so Astral's living in our dorm can have a place to talk about their problems to someone. The faculty already have a great deal of respect for her, so getting it started wasn't too difficult. But no one's been coming for help. Ah, so She's a well-known figure of dorm as a dorm manager, so a few people do stop by every day. But they're not really coming for help with their problems. They're just there to say hi to Hazuki and then leave. Maybe that just means nobody has any serious problems they need help with? Dude, it's high school. Of course they do. They may not be serious in the grand scheme of things, but for kids, they're super serious. Well, either way, I think you should just relax. No, no. She heaves a weary sigh. I mean, that's not bad, but I'm guessing your SEO is terrible. She's feeling really distraught over this. I think it's about time for me to pitch in and help. After school, I say bye to Hazuki and search for a certain person. Pretty sure it was around here. Ah, there he is. I finally find the person I'm looking for. Hey, you got a moment? I call out the mean-looking male student with dyed hair dyed blonde. With him, uh, with him are people I assume are his friends. They just look as they look just as intimidating as him. Ah, uh, Exactly the reaction I expected. I have something to ask you guys. It won't take that long though, so don't worry. Of course I will. I say while clenching my fist. So let's discuss this like adults. Interesting. Hey, Hazuki, I got some students with me who'd like a consultation. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> Her face lights up like a lamp. Come on in, guys. Their eyes meet, the boys grimace while Hazuki greets them with a smile. What are you standing there for? You wanted consultations, didn't you? She offered you a seat. Go ahead, sit down. What did we do to them? The rough looking fellows take their seats. The scene looks like it came straight out of a painting. <laughs> they like rough play, apparently. They were tumbling around on the ground while they were playing earlier. Of course, the truth is that we had a good little discussion before coming here with our fists. <laughs> we're freaking like a mob boss, like, you're getting counseling! <laughs> That'd be the most insane, uh... Uh, like, Mafia slash, uh, Yakuza ever. Like, they just go around town and beat people up for not getting mental, like, uh, proper counseling support and, like, not going to see their doctors regularly. <laughs> it's like, this is proactive health care. That's what it is, proactive health care. 
Yeah, they're just scratches. I don't think they need a trip to the infirmary. She's genuinely concerned about them. Well, that's what makes her so great. She can get along with most people thanks to that attitude. But they came here for a consultation first, right? They just go they just go along with it. Uh yeah. They glance at me, not knowing what to say. They told me they were having trouble keeping up with classes. She looks elated to finally have something to do. Isn't that great, you guys? I put my arms around her shoulders and smile. She's a great teacher, so make sure you pay attention and work hard. You're going to get help. Or else you're going to need more help. Yeah, that'll work with them, right? I slightly grip their shoulders. <laughs> she happily makes a note of the appointment on the whiteboard. <laughs> Thanks to Hazuki's frankness, the boys gradually warmed up to her. By the end, they told her about their complaints about teachers and worries they had re uh, regarding their astral abilities. Yeah, so they are. Yeah, everyone has their own issues. Some people like them are forced into the mold and end up as outcasts merely because of their abilities. I'd argue like that for just people in general. And because of their pride, they'd never come, in for, to, uh, come to others for help of their own accord. That's why I used a rougher approach to give them a nudge in the right direction. Young. You'll keep, meeting, you'll keep meeting every week, so why don't you talk to them and get to know them more about them? See if you can help them little by little. Satisfied with my answer, she nods. Oh, uh, I just saw them looking bored in some corner of campus, so I went up to them and, I, and we had a good job, talk. They opened up to me pretty fast. She takes my hands and stares intently at them. I'm glad she's not clueless. Yeah. Uh, sorry, through that. Sorry. I'll try not to do this anymore. So <laughs> stick A few days later, he seriously called you? Ah, so nanda. The blondish haired boy I introduced to Hazuki, Komat Suzawa, asked to meet on the weekend, so I'm here to accompany her. Well, I'm too worried to leave my adorable girlfriend alone with another guy. Because you're freaking adorable! I mean, what if he confessed to you? I don't know! I, I, I wouldn't... I, you, you doubt yourself too much. You really don't get it, do you? You're just not aware of how cute and attractive you really are. I'm just speaking the truth. You're the cutest girl in the world. Oh! Hi! What's so wrong about saying the truth? We both turn around to find Komat Suzawa standing right there awkwardly. She clears her throat and turns to him. Her, he proceeds to tell her he was caught cheating on a test and he was assigned community service as a punishment. However, he has a date with his girlfriend today who attends another school. It's important that he doesn't miss their date, he says, because they won't be able to see each other for a month after this. Hmm, I mean, you probably shouldn't have cheated in the first place. 
Well, that's the thing, though. That's not actually a solution. He let out a dry and sad chuckle. Hazuki. <clears throat> She's too precious. ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、
If she keeps doing what they ask of her each and every time, there will never be an end to it. That's why this is probably like a one time thing. That's true. Like, he came of his own volition. God. She's so wonderful. This is why she also would make a fantastic officer. Like, think about that. She understands that she can be taken advantage of, but if it, even if, it, but it, like she wants to give him at least the benefit. Hmm. Yeah, I can see why she thinks so. Yeah, I guess that's a fair point. Definitely not, and I pray to God that never happens. <laughs> Darn right I would. <sighs> I'm done over here too. As soon as Azuki's done washing the tub itself, we're finished. Hard labor than you harder harder labor than you expected, wasn't it? Mm. Scrubbing so hard for extended periods of time will do that. Any time. So what do we do now? Mm. We finished early, but not early enough for us to have time to go out to do something. Oh good idea. Of course not. I'm seeing the through line here, though. <laughs> Easy now, don't push it too hard. There's a huge mass of water the size of a small car floating in the middle of the room. At first, she practiced her control of small water balls, but now it's escalated to this. You were on an emotional high then. She's moving more than half the water in this public bath. She reassures me everything's all right and starts moving it. Whoa, not so fast. Suddenly the mass of water begins losing shape and she loses control of a portion of it and crashes to the floor. Ah! I'm the one closest to it and a sudden torrent of water makes me trip onto the floor. Man, that's why I told you not to push it. You'll have to pay me back for this now. Yeah, I see where this is going. How about this? Okay, I'll grab her body and pull her in to, uh, to put my lips on hers. I'm guessing we're gonna have to part ways again, YouTube. Have fun wherever you go in the Shadow Realm. <laughs> God, so slurpy. At first she's surprised, but it doesn't take too long for her to start using her tongue too. Part our lips and stare passionately into each other's eyes. Did that get you horny? <laughs> she clings to me, rubbing her thighs together tantalizingly. Well, she's willing. Let's do this. Welcome back from Banishment! That was a really cute one, actually. I, so I've said it before, I will have to redact. Okay, so there is a level of 
fantasy that's pretty extreme in some of these situations, to be fair. But I can give it, like, credibility for that because they kind of are summarizing an entire relationship in one moment and they make it very, like, picturesque. So, like, the rea- like, but, like, it's not as far gone as it would seem. More of, like, it's a string of, like, of encounters maybe all put together rather than just one, like, like, because, like, in reality, there'd be, like, spacing between such events. We'll just say that. Really good, though. After Hazuki used her ability to clean our clothes, we were finally done. Your ability's pretty handy. She seems really exhausted after the whole ordeal. Well, let's head back to our rooms. Yeah, I bet! <laughs> after we begin picking up and cleaning equipment, someone walks in. Oh, that was close! It's a bit odd seeing him here. Really? You said it now after we're done? She pre he presented us with a little basket full of sweets. She wasted on you, that's for sure. <laughs><笑>確かに自分には出来すぎた彼女だと思ってるんですよ。とにかく俺にもなんか手伝わせてください。よし、じゃあ一緒に頑張ろう。あらかた終わってしまったが、何？別に何度掃除したって構わないんだ
specifically for patrons. At the start of next year, we will do some more voting for some of the other series that we're going to cover on the rest of the days of the week, so keep that in mind. But uh, I just want to make sure, patrons, you're paying attention to that. Finally, I want to make sure and stress again, next week we will be doing the live stream, Capstone, the wrap party for this, and then we'll be moving on to something else the week after. So thank you so much for your time and being here. I will say a little bit, just a foundation of kind of my experience of the game so far and my impression of it. Um, so far, the story is really interesting. I do think it's odd that like each story route kind of gives you different slices of a story. Some of it like touches on the core story. Some of it just avoids it altogether, like Hazuki's story. Like um, it's interesting, and I do like how Hazuki's route really played out. I think it did a lot more to develop like the world building and specifically like the role of astrals in society um, and like the the conflict that comes from that. Um, so I think it was actually really good and ironically seeing the other routes It's a great one to feature on the channel because while it has its own kind of self-containment other routes like have like They leave a lot of questions in the air They get answered by the other routes And so in a way it feels like we got a kind of complete story instead of a half story Which again is a really good thing I think for a feature on the channel But the other routes are fantastic and I highly recommend you check them out I've also said before when you get the full game patch um, I feel like the H scenes are very tasteful. They're very thorough and very engaging, you could say, very um, stimulating. But I find them in good taste, so I highly recommend you get the full patch if that's something that's of interest to you. But don't feel like you're gonna be like, like ruining a story for yourself if you don't get it. It's all up to you. But sometimes games take it too far. I don't think Ubisoft does. I feel like they've done a great job of having the contextual side of it and making it also feel well, maybe it's idealized and fantasized, but there's also grounded, unlike other games I've seen that do H scenes in a way that's more like, like it's so over the top, it's like beyond realism. I don't think these are. I feel like the, the, the Riddle Joker scenes are well within the realm of like, Anyway, we'll move on from that. <laughs> I'm not gonna go into that any further. That's gonna be TMI's, uh, but I still give thumbs up, very well proved. Um, I can't say I have a favorite yet because I kind of want to see them all through to the end first, but I do think that I really resonate strongly with the character Hazuki and me as an individual based on what I've seen of the characters. They're all fun and engaging and, and good to be around. I think this Hazuki would personally be one I would vibe with very well, but at the same time, we're also very, very similar. And anytime I dated people like that I was really similar to, it tended to not work out. So if I had to say out of the girl, uh, out of the other routes that I've seen so far, and I had to pick the next one that I felt the most like bonded and attached to, it would be Ayase's route, which is not so surprising. A lot of you said that that was your favorite. I don't know if that's my favorite though. We'll see, but it has its ups and it has points that I found very appealing to me personally, like uh, my personality. But again, we'll have to see. Anyway, uh, I'll have a lot more details to share with you when we get to the wrap party, uh, so please look forward to that. You should see postings for it coming up in the next uh, few days, and then like the actual like announcement on the channel. Usually, you can do like a, you can save the event. Um, it should be coming up sometime, probably around Wednesday next week. Is usually a couple days early is when I post it because if you do it too early, uh, far in advance, it tends to just get lost. And if you do it too close to the event, it defeats the point of like it being shared as like something that's about to, like, going to happen soon. So just keep an eye out for that. I highly recommend you put the notification on for it if you want to actually attend on you know, on your own and kind of like be able to participate directly with me as I'm talking about the series. And if not, just watch it whenever you can and uh, look forward to announcing whatever we do next. I'm hoping to have the poll out for the patrons soon because ideally I want to have the announcement at the wrap party of what the next game we're going to play is. But I don't always get around to that depending on like some, some factors, so we'll see. Anyway. Thank you guys so much for joining me, and especially for this long-winded kind of ending to this series, but thank you for being a part of this episode. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I certainly enjoyed myself. This has been a fantastic uh, playthrough, and if this is one of the weaker titles that the Ubisoft company has come out with, I can't wait to dive into more. So thank you so much. If you have recommendations for the next Ubisoft title you want me to, ch to go to, go to the Discord. There's a place for VN recommendations. It's a great place to go and post links and, uh, and what you're interested in. It also archives it so I can go back and check um, later if I want to like review what people have been speaking about. But yeah, we'll get there when we get there. Thank you guys so much. Hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. And until the next video, watching me, I'll see me in next. I'll see you there.